Yo, welcome back to The Gavel. Now, two key members of President Buhari's cabinet were before the Senate Committee on Appropriation during the week. Committee members invited them to understand the level of implementation of the 2016 budget in terms of releases and other issues on the economy. Two members of President Buhari's economic team are before members of the Senate Committee on Appropriation. They are here to give details of the level of implementation of the 2016 budget and the state of the economy. It's the turn of the Minister of Finance and she goes straight to an issue which has been at the centre of public discourse for some time. How much funds have been recovered from those who looted the country's coffers? The finance minister also reveals that some revenue generating agencies are inflating their expenses and explains what government is doing about it.
The finance minister also says the federal government is still waiting for the final agreement with Nexim Bank China on funding the rail project. The House of Representatives handled a sensitive issue during the week, and that was a bill on rehabilitation and reintegration in the Niger Delta region. This bill would be for the implementation of the presidential amnesty program in the Niger Delta. With renewed agitations and militancy in the Niger Delta, the bill seeks to explore ways of addressing these persistent challenges. So while the Traditional rulers, state and federal government officials at a public hearing on a bill before the House Committee on Niger Delta Affairs. The bill is titled The Presidential Programme on Rehabilitation and Reintegration and it will be for the implementation of a presidential amnesty programme in the Niger Delta. The Chairman of the House Committee and the Deputy Minority Leader speaks on what the bill hopes to achieve. At the time the amnesty was implemented, there was no legal framework in place to guide the implementation of this program. This subjected the program to various abuses. There was no exit date, and such expensive program could not be carry, carried on endlessly. One, to provide a legal and institutional framework for the implementation and management of the presidential amnesty program, Two, to consolidate the different phases of the program from inception. Three, to ensure an orderly completion of the mandate of the program with a proper exit date. Those present at the event made use of the occasion to identify different aspects of the bill they want amended. The tenure of the coordinator of the program should not be longer than the lifespan of the program being coordinated. A six-year, three-plus-three term may also be optimistic. What at the moment is solely run by the federal government? This needs to change. The state governments in the region need to be engaged as partners with the federal government. This is applicable in the US, in uh, Britain, in China, even in Nigeria, what we started. Even in South Africa, we are talking about. Qatar's all these programs are directly under the president because it is very important. The committee says it will consider all the positions presented as it works towards contributing to the peace, progress and development of the Niger Delta region. Meanwhile, the House of Representatives is to investigate what it has described as the extrajudicial killing of four Nigerians in Bayelsa State. Considering a motion of urgent public importance sponsored by Representative Duoye Diwi. The House expressed its concern over a trend that may lead to the breakdown of law and order. The Inspector General of Police, Idris Ibrahim, is to appear before a joint committee of the House on the matter. The House is concerned that while carrying out their constitutional role in the Bielsa State Command, particularly at a place called a Keki community in Yenagoa local government area, to be precise, the police is alleged to have been engaged in extrajudicial killings. The House is further concerned that in the last two weeks, the Nigerian Police Force, Bielsa State Command, slash the Joint Task Force, has shot and killed four innocent Nigerians, namely Innocent Kokorifa, a 17 years old boy, Izu Joseph, a footballer with 3SC in a badon, Inyan, a 30 years old man, and God gift Oduku, a five year old girl. The house is worried that the trend, if not checked, may lead to breakdown of law and order. Well, that's what we have for you this week on The Gavel. Thanks for being with us. I'm Lan Ray Lassese. Take care.